you are going to want to stick around today because we have Brett and Jace of Misfit Media, and they are going to tell us not only how they help their clients to totally build their businesses with restaurant clients, restaurant concepts, they're also going to tell you how they brought their business to over a million dollars this year. What? It's going to be so good. So they're going to talk about scaling their agency. And I know that is something that you are going to be stoked to learn about. And before we bring them on, I wanted to tell you about the amazing conversations conference that is coming up in September. September. So let us know in the chat, will you be at the Conversations Conference? I've got some special news for you today about the Conversations Conference. So it is September 13th through 15th in Austin. The 13th is the agency day. The 14th and the 15th is the day that's open for everyone who is using bots to build their business or to build businesses for their clients. So let us know in the chat if you'll be there. And we would also love to know if you could comment misfit below, ooh, here we go, Miss Bit below this video, you will get access to show notes from today's show and also to a special discount code because there is still a chance for you to get an awesome deal on this conference. I'm so glad that you're here. I see Brett is here. Brett says, <laughs> Ben Jones, thanks for putting me on. I'm glad that you guys are here. Let us know if you can hear us. All that stuff is going well. Good, Misfit, awesome, I love it. And my name is Molly Mahoney. I am honored to be your host of the Many Chat Meet the Speakers Conversations Conference series that we have going on here. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Brett and Jace and Misfit Media. They are supporting over 140 restaurant concepts in building their business. This is a seriously awesome direct response marketing agency, and their main tool that they use is none other than ManyChat. So we're so stoked to have them here. If you have questions that come up during this video, give us a cue before your question, then ask the question right there. We'll pop it up on the screen. We're using the magic of BeLive TV to make this happen. Um, so good. Rebecca makes a great point. She says she wished that she lived in the US. So Rebecca, where are you watching this from? Let us know where you are watching this from because we love the fact that this the mini chat community is such a worldwide community. It's pretty dang awesome. Stefan is in Germany. So, so, so great. And if you have not yet booked your ticket for the mini chat conversations conference, I just want to tell you it is the conference to like blow every other conference out of the water. There's going to be close to 2000 people, I believe is what we're expecting at this conference. And they're all people just like you who are obsessed with messenger bots. So this is going to be an awesome place not only to learn from many chat from people like Randy Zuckerberg, Neil Patel, Mari Smith, other speakers like Brett and Jace who are going to be there, but also to connect with other human beings. And I cannot wait for it. So with no further ado, we are going to bring these two up on the screen. Brett and Jace will be joining us. Keep those questions coming. And we are going to talk all about scaling your messenger marketing agency. And they are coming in right i think now hooray there we go awesome so good to see you <laughs> what's up <laughs> and i love that we're all in california too it's so crazy i we've had people from literally all over so it's awesome to have more californians here with us did you guys both grow up in california yeah both socal guys yeah i love it yeah we're so good so tell us i would love to start with learning more about how you actually were uh, introduced to the world of messenger bots, both of you separately. I don't know if you discovered it together, if that was like the inspiration for you combining your forces. Um, let us know, I'd love to know. Um, well, I think like initially, Jace, you found found it through like, I mean, Jace and I are huge on just investing in like in coaching and online courses and networking with other marketers, obviously. As a marketer, you're always looking for like, what is the next best thing, you know what I mean? And so yeah. I think we're both really good at that. But I think Jason initially found just the power of messenger in general. And he's like, hey, I, I think I got something here. We should check this out. So were you and already working together with your agency before you learned about oh, messenger Oh, totally. Me, me, okay. me and Jason been at it for years. I mean- we, But together. It, yeah. In, in the beginning, I mean, we were doing some pretty ridiculous marketing strategies. I don't even know how we were in business. Um, so looking at what we're <laughs> doing now be, versus the beginning. Be a, a session in itself. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, we 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 found we found many chat and messenger marketing. Uh, you know, Brett and I have been working together for you know over four years now, um, and a lot of that was we were looking for platforms to service our local clients. Uh, specifically, we were working with some restaurants, 
and we were struggling to find a solution that really did them justice and was able to get them like a return on their investment that they were doing with us. And so we were using email, we were using text, we were using, you know, all these different tactics. And then that's when I went to Brett and I said, Hey, I, I found this thing on messenger. Like, I think it could, you know, I think it could work and it could service some of our clients. And then, uh, you know, rest, rest is history after that. <laughs> Awesome. And so I've seen you guys talk a lot about ROI, which we love here, obviously. I um, Max is here too, which is so awesome. Max Gibbons from the team. Hey, hey. Uh, ROI is something that is, I, I saw a video that you did, Brett, where you were talking about how a lot of marketers were actually not pay attention to that. They'll just put things out and they'll be like, oh, we got you reach <laughs> and not actually pay attention to how they're act, we're actually um, you know, proving that we're bringing in more actual sales for our clients. So I'm assuming that that focus on ROI is a big piece of how you grew your agency as well, because being able to prove to your clients that you're actually bringing them results is a great way to keep your clients, right? Is that Absolutely. True? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest thing is the reason we focus on the restaurant space now is because we found a very, two big, very big issues with the space, right? Number one is most restaurant marketers have no idea if what they're doing is actually producing an ROI or not. I mean, it sounds kind of crazy. Like, I don't even know how they're in business, how that works. But the thing about it is that restaurants, they're not used to it. They're used to like traditional methods like radio, television, posting on social media. We call it random acts of marketing, hope marketing to get customers. It's the but, post and pray method, right? Yeah, the post yeah. and pray, exactly. So basically like what we're able to do is like, hey, we can provide a system that can literally not only find new customers basically on automation, but also track the return on investment. I mean, they're just like mind blown. You know, it's yeah. like they, they go from getting reports that were like, hey, you got a hundred likes and 20 new followers, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, hey, guess what? You give us a thousand bucks, we gave you five grand back, that's a five X return. And suddenly totally they're like, awesome. wait a sec. <laughs> so <laughs> you know like, I mean? when it comes to reporting that back to the clients, what are your, what are your um, like main like secrets to making that not something that makes you crawl under your desk and want to hide, but maybe like, do you feel like you have, you have a system in place that makes it easy? It makes it um, like duplicatable, obviously with over 140 clients. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, both me and Jace are huge on like building systems and processes versus yeah. like trying to build a business. Like where that's always our number one thing. So when we were kind of moving into this new route, I mean, we literally do almost the exact same thing for every single client. The reporting's almost exactly the same. And on that note with the reporting, we're actually building out a software that's gonna connect straight into ManyChat and, and Messenger that'll show clients a full dashboard of exactly what's going on 24 seven. So, so I saw so something about this, actually I was gonna ask you about this earlier. So I saw when I was looking at, uh, at information about you like doing a little bit of research beforehand, I saw that you mentioned something about a tool. So maybe that's what this is. Do you, do you wanna tell us a little bit about that? Is that something you can give us a little sneak peek at? So we're going to actually reveal the software at the conversations conference. So we're Which actually going to another conference. reason to get yourself to yeah. <laughs> yeah. conference. I love it. <laughs> um, but it's, it's both me and Jace's first time really diving into software. Like, I yeah. mean, we're, we're marketers, but we're not, you know, we don't, we don't know any kind of languages. We don't develop anything ourselves. So it's our first stab at it. Um, as of now, our reporting literally lives on an Excel sheet. It looks kind of like a nineties website. If you will, it looks pretty bad. Uh, so we just really want to have something clean. Uh, that looks more consistent, that looks just more streamlined, and that's where we're building the software. Also, awesome. for communication purposes back and forth, it's just easier if the client can log in themselves versus asking us every time via email, right? Totally. Um, I've noticed this but, is something that I think there's a there's a huge opportunity in the in this in our space for something like that because I've seen so many crazy hacks. You know, we're we're um I don't know if you know Chris Mercer, but Chris Mercer has an amazing program called Measurement Marketing, and I love it and I'm like so into tracking all that stuff but sometimes it's like seriously why isn't there just one thing that you could go bloop bloop and it like shows you because we all need it so um yeah super cool that you're doing this I love it and have yeah, you I mean, always well, focused on restaurants or is that a choice you made? go ahead wait say that again Going no, ahead. I was saying, uh, just, just to kind of compliment what Brett was saying, is that uh, the everything that we're building in the software and all that is is, is meant to complement the ManyChat software, um, things that we're already doing to provide our clients um, returns. So, you know, as as you know, ManyChat continues to evolve and that sort of thing, is that we're going to be right in line with it, um, you know, continuing to better, you know, what, 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 we're, what we're being able to offer to, you know, the clients that we service and everything. Yes, yeah, super awesome. So... 
what do you think, like, can you share some of the strategies that you used to be able to take your agency past a million dollars? I um, I know we've got people here who are building agencies. Actually, I'd love to know from people who are watching right now, are you building bots for other people? Are you building bots for yourself? And if you are building bots for clients, what types of businesses are you serving? Uh, let us know in the chat, and then that'll help us to be able to continue to support you through this video today. And did you, here's like two questions that I have. So did you, were you always serving restaurants or was there something that, um, really allowed you to focus in on that or told you like, Hey, we've got to only serve restaurants. Was there a decision that you made about that? Yeah. I mean, well, no, early on, I mean, me and, and we're going to talk more about some at conversations, but yeah. we had this joke that we were the agency for everyone model. Like literally <laughs> it was like, Hey, you want a website, you want an app, you want social media management, you want content. Like, yeah. Hey, you want to move your fridge? Like we got you, like whatever you yeah. need, we got you. And it was every industry. I mean, we did fitness apparel, we did uh, sunglasses, we did women's bikini brands, we even sold Botox. I mean, it was insane. So <laughs> uh, we all did everything are, in the beginning. All those are 100% uh, true, by the way. Okay. So like, you literally, every, everybody everybody sees like Misfit Media as, you know, speaking at, you know, the conversations conference and all that, but you don't see like the previous three years of me and Brett just literally working with any industry possible, providing every service possible um, and, you know, and I, I think it's really, common for, it's really common for entrepreneurs as well because we get excited about new things. We're usually like quick starts who want to, um, you know, try, try to support everybody. We look at opportunity, we take opportunity. And at some point it's gotta be like, whoa, we're gonna lose our minds and all of our clients if we don't actually focus. So how did you make mm -hmm. that shift so that you went from um, whatever it was to <laughs> like Botox to restaurants? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, here, okay, here's the thing, it's like, we had heard and we kind of knew that if you wanted to scale an agency, you had to niche down. Like yeah. it's kind of common knowledge at this point. It but, is. But you know what? People still fight right? it though. Like you can hear it again, yeah. and again and again. But like I've been at networking events where people are like, who's your ideal client? And then they say anyone with skin. I'm like, that's really easy yeah. to refer someone to you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so here's, so here's the thing. Like we knew we had to niche down, but yeah. it's hard to turn away business when you're first starting out and you don't have a lot of money. You know, it's like, yeah. hey, someone's knocking your door and they're like, hey, they want to give you two grand. Like, you want to take that two grand. But, you know, understanding that if you take that two grand, you're now serving that client and it's taking away from your overall vision, which is giving you basically the stepping stones to get to the next step. So yeah. when we decided restaurants, because really all it was is that, I mean, <clears throat> even we did like when we were doing e-commerce, e-commerce was really cool because it's very cutthroat uh, marketing and it's easy to keep a client if you're doing well because hey, you spend $1,000, you can track the return, it's all online, it's yeah. all through credit card, easy. Restaurant space was difficult, so it's like, you can't see that. So we're like, wait a second, if we can do for what we do for e-commerce brands, but for restaurants, and we can track and prove it, we can solve a pretty major problem in this space, and really no one else was doing this. Yeah. So we're like, e-commerce is way too competitive at this point, it's crazy, and it's getting even crazier, and restaurants, it's basically a bunch of old school marketers that know nothing about this stuff. Yeah. Not to mention messenger marketing, I mean, and so it, it was like, there's so like a prime. restaurant on every corner. So you can, when people are like, uh, no pun intended, hungry for leads, right? They, yeah, they like, it. <laughs> walk, I really didn't mean that. And I looked up and I, saw that this I, is hungry I came for up with, There's one restaurant for every 300 people in the United States. So it's pretty, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite, I mean, quite a bit of restaurants out there of people that need, need the service. Yeah. Right? Um, totally. And I love to answer your question you though about. Kinsey to, to okay. answer your question though about in terms of like, you know, scaling agency, niche down, all those things is I think the biggest thing that, um, you know, agencies struggle with in terms of like getting past that, that like, just four off things is number one, um, they, they don't service a particular niche. And the second one is that they don't have a way to predictively generate new customers for themselves every single month. Mm. So when you don't focus on yeah. a niche, you're not really like the master of anything. So then if you're trying to compete with restaurants and you're looking at us, well, you're, our whole brand, everything is focused around restaurants. And you can make the same argument if you're going after dentists or e-commerce, people want to work with whoever is the best, right? So if you aren't really the best at anything, then you're always going to get, you know, swept up by somebody who is. And then the second part, I think a lot of times is that people 
don't um, they don't focus on generating themselves customers. A lot of times they're focused on getting their clients results. But uh, the biggest thing for us was being able to um, be, have have a way to predictably bring new customers um, to ourselves, and that's how you know we've been able to grow in, in a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's like the business development piece can be so difficult to focus on because once you get clients, then you start serving your clients and then you sort of, it's like the cobbler's shoes. You start, you know, not focusing on your own thing. Ooh, what's this? I like notebooks. So this on to back up <laughs> Jason's point, literally this is our sales script. In the last year and a half, I've done over 700 sales calls, literally. Oh my God. And literally this is a step-by-step -step, uh, notes of exactly how to sell a restaurant anywhere in the country. And it's step-by-step yeah. -step details. And the reason we can do step-by-step -step details to have this script is because we've done so many of them. To Jason's point, we are literally experts in this space at this point. So I know what the restaurants are gonna say. I, I know what questions they're gonna have. I know what reservations they're gonna have. I know what they desire. I know the opportunities in the space. I know what they're already doing. I'll ask a question, I already know what they're gonna say. So I already know what I'm gonna reply to it before they even say anything. Yeah. So you know, we really understand these restaurants. Like for instance, Something they always say, which is really funny, but we never knew this until we started diving into this, is every restaurant says like, well, we need butts and seats. That's our biggest pain point. And I'm like, totally. okay, like that's their thing, I, I, you know? <laughs> but you would not know that unless yeah. you worked with them. And like maybe in the dental space, they have a weird thing they say, like maybe in the car wash space, they have a weird thing they say, I don't know, but I don't do those spaces, so it doesn't matter to me. But by focusing just on this space, literally we're the experts, everything we do is about restaurants. And so they're like, they feel like we really understand them. And in a world today where there's so many agencies and so competitive, they want to be understood. They want to be no, they, they want people to understand their pain points and what they want and what they desire and what they've been through. Um, so one thing I always say too on the, on the sales script, this line gets restaurant owners every time. As I say, you know, the focus with what we do here is about obviously, you know, getting you guys a return on your investment. It's about getting customers in the doors, about getting butts and seats because look, let's just be real. You're gonna get likes and you're gonna get followers, you're gonna get all these great things, but at the end of the day, you know, you can't deposit likes into the bank. So just ask, I don't know why everyone's so obsessed with them these days. And they're always like, ah, oh, yes, I love that you said that. And I know they're gonna say that every time, but I've done it so many times. Totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this, this like speaks really, really clearly to one of the things that we love so much about ManyChat is that not only is it a marketing tool, it's a listening tool. And yeah. so by using things like, you know, custom fields or comment. Com even like comment growth tools with an open-ended keyword where they're sharing things about what they want in their business. If everyone starts sharing that they want butts and seats, you're gonna have that information and be able to bring it back to them, right? Like having an actual conversation with a human being is probably the best way to listen, but I'd say ManyChat might be the next best way to listen to your community. Yeah. Right? So yeah, for people who have not it had provides. 700 sales calls. Oh, I know. Yeah, the, 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 sale, the sales calls are, are it's, an, it's an unfair advantage because we get to talk to these people and learn directly from what they're saying. So a lot of times in our marketing is like we're, we're not really making up a lot of the stuff ads or our sales copy or any of that. Like Brett's, you know, our team's ability to talk to so many of these people, like we're not guessing like we know. And that, you know, again, yeah. that's kind of something that helps us set, uh, you know, set us up for success versus the normal person where, you know, you're just going to a client saying, hey, we can get you more customers. Um, it, it's that level of deeper understanding um, as well, Molly, as you said, some of the, you know, many chat features and all, all that, that, uh, you know, that, that really can, you know, make something like that really powerful. And I think also the systematizing. So like when you're niching down, that's another thing that if you are serving so many different types of clients that you can't get those exact systems in place because they're they're different when they're in different niches. So it's different mm -hmm. types of things you're gonna need to do for them. And that sucks up so much time that you could then be spending on, you know, connecting with new clients. So I think what you mentioned earlier about the systems in place is so hugely important. So I'll yeah, love I it. Think, so uh, I, what are you talking about? What's that? What exactly are you talking about at conference? So we're going to be talking about specifically how we went from the general model to the specialist model, niching down in the restaurant space. Obviously, we're going to be talking about really like the overall how we got started in the beginning. Like, there's we're going to show a picture of me and Jason 2016, and everyone's going to freaking laugh. We look terrible, and, it, <laughs> and it, we look pathetic. <laughs> like, um, 
And then we're going to show um, basically what our system looks like, what we specifically do for restaurants. We're going to show our software, the back end of it. Um, and then we're going to talk about what we call our flywheel effect, which is kind of what we've been discussing on this call. But it's basically how our service and fulfillment, uh, our marketing and our sales are all really interly connected and how they kind of feed off each other. And then we're going to talk about our methodologies. And our methodologies are basically kind of our catchphrases, um, our terms, um, how we differentiate ourselves in the market. So one thing we say is we're, we're famous for the campaign stacking method, which we're going to discuss. But it's something where we become well known for saying that. So when I'm on a sales call too, I'll be like, you know, and this is what we're most famous for, the campaign stacking method. And they're like, oh, I've seen the campaign stacking method. And so that's like our thing. Yeah. And we're going to talk about how people can do that for themselves too and make so them look very superior. Because yeah. here's the thing is I want everyone to know whoever watches us speak, we do restaurants, but literally someone can take our exact same model and do it for car washes or dental offices or so many other niche markets yeah. and dominate it. I mean, the car wash space to me actually is a really great space that no one's touching. Literally. Yeah, I have not heard yeah. anyone ever mention the car wash space, and there are lots of cars and ever. lots of cars that need to really be washed. So, so Someone should like grab it. that. Yeah, so <laughs> who's going to jump into the car wash space? It's not going to be me, and I'm sure it's not going to be you guys, but I'm sure there is someone here who may want to jump into the car wash space. Yeah. There's so much opportunity. It's so cool. And I love the methodology thing. Methodology thing. We call it your your method or sometimes your framework also. And I, I love – I was actually just working with this on my – uh, I have a coaching program called Glam, Go Live and Monetize. And mm. we I love coming up with like the 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 way to come up with the names for it. So like using acronyms for it so that it's easier to understand, like um or or um, alliteration. Like I have this thing called the Map to Millions that combines bots and Facebook Live, which I'll be talking about at conference. And I think you're so right. When you have names that you can give to your actual systems and your methods it's an instant way to allow people to resonate with it because it's a tangible thing right it becomes a thing that they yeah. can talk about and, and recognize. It has a, a complicated software i mean it, it provides us with like so many options to service people right but like there's yeah. a lot of stuff going on and to the normal person looking in from the outside like trying to explain to them the their sequences and custom values and all these things Instead of doing yeah. that, they can't understand that, but they can understand campaign stacking method, right? Totally. So it's putting it in a framework for them to understand and realize like how this can help me in my business. Amen. And that's really back to like knowing who your ideal client is, because you're going to use different words depending on who you're talking to. And I think for most of us, when we first get started in this space, we get excited about all the magic that many, ca many chat can do. And so then we're like, watch, look at this. And we show like the backside of like what a quiz would look like. And then our clients completely gloss over and they don't want to talk to us anymore because it looks scary. Right. Yeah. So something on that note too, which I've noticed is I see so many agency owners who are first starting out. Um, this is something they really should not do. Okay. <laughs> I've seen a lot of them do it. So I need to say this is that they'll say, Hey, they'll do a post and say, Hey, I'll build your very first bot, you know, click below to, to get your free bot. Who the heck wants a bot? No, nobody knows what that is if you're not a digital marketer. It sounds scary. You're like, what is this? Why do I want this? How is it yeah. helping me? Like, I what? remember I spoke at Social Media Week Austin and someone thought that before I actually spoke, she thought that I was speaking about, it was like kind of near the election stuff. And she thought I was speaking about yeah. like, election bots that were going to take over things <laughs> like she yeah like, no, 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 no. so it's so true to be clear like instead if you said comment below to get butts and seats whatever like totally you know, what like, do they actually you, want if you say the word bot it, people right now at least they're a little bit weird about it especially restaurants you say bot they freak out and run away so i never yeah. say bot ever any of our marketing any of our sales pitches never say the word bot we say messenger marketing yeah but we don't say bot because they get they go weird they don't get it yeah you know what i mean I mm -hmm. love it. So speaking of messenger marketing, there's this conference coming up. Have you heard about it? It's called the Conversations Conference. It's all about <laughs> messenger marketing. Did you guys go last year? I've heard about it. You, yeah? Are you going to be there? Yeah. We, we, yeah. We'll be there, actually. Cool. That's so awesome. Did you guys go <laughs> last year? We were there last we year. We did too. go last year. Yeah. yeah. So tell, give we us were... some highlights about what it was like, like what your, what your impression was of the conference. We were actually like – on some picture in the audience, we just realized from last year that we were going to maybe pull and put in the presentation. Cool. We didn't even realize. Yeah. It was kind of cool. Yeah. 
but no, me, me and Jace loved it. I mean, it, it was like, it was so cool. It was so eye opening. Um, you know, a few of the speakers who we connected with and we ended up coaching with also this year. So that was also really cool. Super. Um, yeah, overall it was I awesome. I mean, the, give some shout outs. Who are some of the speakers that you cooked with? We can tag them and we'll give them a shout uh, out. Ollie, Ollie Bilson. Oh, cool. Awesome. I'm not sure if he talked, if he's speaking Ollie this Bilson. year, but uh, last year he was a speaker. Yeah, I'll give him a shout out. Super love it. What was it that he oh, shared? Oh, and Matt, Matt Lights too. I love yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Matt has been yeah. on the show. He's so, oh my gosh, I love it. So what are some of the things that you, as a as a um, attendee, what are some of the things that like totally blew your mind? I remember Jason Swank was sharing that last year, even he was a speaker last year, but there was something that he learned while he was there that he was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to put that into action right away. Was there anything that happened like that for you at the conference? I think overall, like learning about just understanding, because last year at, at conversations, right, that was like the first of its kind. And yeah. there was nothing really like that before. So um, really, it was just like so new. Like we were just like doing, starting to do this, like, you know, for a majority of our clients and for us, like getting to connect with other people who are also kind of doing this as well was, we're the first people to be a part of this. And it, it was just, you know, exciting. And just for us to like learn more about it and connect with people who are also on this train, um, that alone, I think, is is kind of what made the conference just uh, just a, an awesome experience last year. Yeah, man. For me too. I was only able to go to the very beginning of it because I was speaking at another conference. So I came only for the first day, which was the most FOMO inducing moment of my life to have to leave. But I yep. will say, just even connecting with other people and being able to ask, like, there's so many specific strategies and questions and just even things like I love how Amanda Bond talks about managing ad motions. Have you heard about that before? Not sure, actually. No, when, your, so. when your clients are like, I don't understand what's happening, or they, you know, they see they get a notification from Facebook that's like your ad was declined, and then they think that like the world is falling apart. When really it's like, oh, we're gonna tweak one little word, and it'll be right back up there. Yeah. A lot of it is about exactly what you've been talking about is the way to speak to our clients so that they feel supported because we live in a totally different world. So yeah, Brett, yeah. Brett, Brett and I were were there, and like at that time, right like there wasn't a whole lot of information. Like we didn't really know that many people we were kind of, we were doing it for a majority of our clients, like I said, but I didn't know that many people who were also yeah. in messenger marketing. So being able to go to the conference and like Brett said is like connect with some of, you know, people that we've worked with some, some coaches and learn more about like get a deeper level of understanding of where um, kind of where everything's going uh, helps us better help serve our clients. So we know, where the market's going and how we can adapt to, to, to be in the right place. And, and here's the thing too, I think for any agency in general, right? Like when me and Jay started out, we were doing purely content creation and posting on Instagram and Facebook. That's all we did. But hey, four years ago, that actually helped a business acquire customers. Today, it doesn't do a whole lot, right? So what does that mean? It means as an agency, you have to consistently be learning and adapting to the new technologies, new things out there, new opportunities. And so for us right now, there is no question that messenger marketing is where all marketing will be going over the next few years. And so we feel really fortunate that we found it early on, that we're in this early on, and we're really pushing it hard, right? And look, I think at some point, maybe something else will come out and maybe there'll be a lifetime to this, but I think we have at least a few years of, of just some awesome, awesome services through this program and what we're doing. You know Seriously. what I mean? And and there's still so few people who are like really, even though it feels like we're so inundated with it, it feels like yeah. there's all of us doing it. But for the most part, yeah. I mean, every day I meet people who are like, wait, what? So let's, I would love to know actually, so if, those of you that are watching right now, did you come to conference last year? Are you planning on coming this year? And let us know what you love about ManyChat, like what you would hope to gain at conference. I'm asking you like 12 questions at once, but I just want all of the things in the chat. Let us know how you're feeling about all of this. So are you guys going to other conferences as well? Like tell us about just conferences in general, how you prioritize that, how do you set aside the time? Because it is it is a, a, a time investment, right? To like totally. go there head out there, but I think our clients appreciate it. So Jace actually found, which is really cool, so Facebook's actually making a case study about one of our clients. They're called okay. Five Napkin Burger. Uh, super awesome. And so basically Jace also found out that there's gonna be a conference in Austin the same weekend called Future Restaurants that it just so happens that our client who's getting the case study about is speaking at. So me and Jace are also going to the Main Shot Conference and then to Future Restaurants. 
Is that um, right after or right before? How's that happening? It's right it's after. Li- it's like, literally the two days <laughs> after conversations. So we got two that for the best one. <laughs> so awesome. So I'm actually speaking at a conference two days before. So I the twelfth, I my amazing team uh, like integrator Elizabeth is here right now, and she was like, "Oh, you have a VIP day on the twelfth," and I was like, "Yeah, that's a VIP day of me and Claire and Danielle at the pool." So we, <laughs> it's like we planned the whole thing out where there's another event that I'm speaking at, and then the VIP day at the pool, and then the conference <laughs> starting on the thirteenth. So I love it, and I think it's. Yeah. Um, you know, we really try to prioritize it so that, like you said, we can stay on the cutting edge. I loved last year, there were so many new things that were announced. So um, and my team member, Kelly, was like texting me from the room, like, oh my gosh, and this thing's coming, and this thing's coming, and this thing's coming. You know, they released so many things while we were actually there, which is so mm-hmm. cool. Um, what do you think like, about the we, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, Sorry, we say love, that, I mean, we, we, we love conferences. And, and I think for if you're a business owner too, is that being able to go to a conference, you're going to get a deeper level of understanding about whatever the subject you're going to learn about. You're going to get better connections than you would by just maybe communicating with somebody like in a Facebook group. Yeah. So we're, we're, we try to go to like at least like a conference a month about uh, just be, you know, just to, for us to stay sharp. Um, you know, I, I can say very rarely that I've gone to a conference and been like, that that was a total waste of time. I, I you know you 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 always you're always like wow I'm so happy that I went because of the level of connections and you know something there's you're gonna always learn like a few things that you like didn't know uh, and uh, no we're 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 all about them. Yeah, there's also an awesome opportunity to create content. Speaking of content creation, so like there's so it's rare to get like we can do things like this where we can you know bring people on virtually, but to be able to create content where you're actually standing in the room together and use that to be able to find like power partners and things like that, that you can then. Um, we, we run and we run Brett, uh, Brett's Facebook page through uh, our, to get a lot of our inbound ads. So you, you can bet at our conferences coming up, we're going to have Brett be doing a bunch of videos. Uh, so we're going to chop those up and then, and then use those on ads. So yeah. I'm already, I'm already, I'm, I'm already thinking about ad ideas that we're going to be utilizing those conferences as props for. So. Just how, well, many, yeah. how many impressions do we have over the last year on our ads? We have about 6 million uh, impressions. <laughs> uh, so I was, I was telling Brett that we're going to, we're going to go to this future restaurants event and I'm like, you're going to be a celebrity there. Every, Everybody, no, you've actually never, nobody's actually met you, but the amount of ads that we've serviced to people in the restaurant space, um, you can probably bet that they're going to know exactly who Brett is. And then are you running location-based ads while you're there at conference? Because that's my favorite. We should, we should, we, we, we should, we should. We yeah. Should I, I and, have, we're gonna be, and we'll be wearing the lanyards with the scan code. So if we got re- feature restaurants, hey, you want to sign up for... Uh, a book a phone call with us or apply to a book a phone call with us, just scan this code and we're gonna walk around and just get leads like crazy. You know, that's yeah, that's the I goal. Like it. Super cool. Oh. One of the one of the we've done this for clients and for our business as well is to do a, like a really personal photo or video on the business page and then target it specifically to the conference and say, hey, I'm here at the conference and I'd love to connect with you. Comment below if you want to connect. Don't say the words comment and say like, let us know below if you want to connect. And um, mm-hmm. it's been mind blowing the amount of actual human connections we've been able to make that way. So we're going we're gonna to for sure do that. Yeah, That's a I fantastic idea. And you can target the actual, like the address of the hotel, which is so cuckoo, right? It's super yeah. awesome. I love it. I actually shout out to Tim Miller. So Tim Miller and I met because we did some video work together. But I will say the reason that I first heard about um, a restaurant system that worked super dang well was through Tim Miller. And it was at an event that I was sponsoring. Tim and I saw each other for maybe five minutes, the entire, maybe 15, the entire time. And he came by and was like, oh my gosh, Molly, I learned this awesome thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. <laughs> like Just in a couple of seconds. So shout out to Tim because he's doing awesome stuff too. I love it. So as we are coming to the end of this video, is there anything that you can share with people who are, you know, not in the place where they're having 700 calls, they're really just looking to get that first chunk of leads coming in to be able to book those calls, aside from um, focusing on car washes, what would you say like the first the first two or three steps are? Oh, man, it's hard. I, I think I, I think I think first off is that there's there's honestly, no, there's nothing that I'm gonna, we're going to be able to tell you right now that there's any shortcut to success. I mean, what you're seeing as a result of you know what we're going to be speaking about at ManyChat. I mean, it's it's every single day, you know, doing sales calls, servicing our clients, investing into our niche, and we've been doing that 
like for the last you know year year and a half two years three years even um and if you want that type of success you're going to need that type of level of investment and that's really that's really what it comes down to and i think the second thing is is that it takes a long time to really understand a niche and really how to service them and so you if you if you have a, a, a certain type of industry that you want to service um you know dive in and continue to do it but what you're going to see is if you stick with it long enough then you start to see the light and that's when things really start to start to get fun yeah i mean there there, there literally there literally is a tipping point because like jace and i were stuck at probably like 25 to thirty thousand a month for for well over a year and we just it just kept it felt kept feeling like how do we get over this how do we get over this and then suddenly you know it's like we niche down on restaurants we niche on our service offerings and we just saw that explosive growth so it's it really comes down to like everyone always says niche but no one ever listens you got to just decide to do it you know what i mean you said this earlier, Chase, and I, or Brett, sorry, you said this earlier, which yeah. I think not necessarily in niching, but just in general, I think this has been something that I've struggled with so much. And we we're we're on track to do a million this year as well. And I think this is one of the reasons, which has been the hardest thing for me, is to say no to opportunities because when so like you said, when someone's willing to pay you to do something. It's like, and we'll make the decision to like not take this type of certain type of client on anymore. And then I'll be at an event or something and I'll meet someone and I know that I can help them. But I forget that it's actually going to take so many hours to be able to do that. Totally. So it's like, it's- We were, we, we were the worst at saying no. And now we're getting better at it. Yeah. 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 I mean, also on that note for people who don't want to say no, okay, great. Partner with someone else who does that type of client that you always get asked about. Like, you Amen. know, a big agency here in LA, they're called Hawk Media. And uh, we, we have some good friends who work there. And whenever I got a lead that's not a restaurant, I'm like, yo, Hawk Media, check them out. And we'll get yeah. a referral. You know, totally. we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get some cut. Like, Which great. There's another benefit you can get when you come to the conversations conference. And if you want to discount, yeah. you can give us the word misfit because you can pair up with other people. If you're launching your car wash bot, then you can pair up with other people who have it. No one needs to do car washes, seriously. It's a great industry. It's not sexy, but it's big and awesome know, there's a new car wash by us that like the building is brand new and it looks real fancy um so maybe car washing can be sexy if you actually apply it I, maybe, honestly, maybe somebody can be like the cool car wash guy though i don't know it hasn't been yeah. done yet who knows I literally think, no I one think, touches them i think it's awesome there's a couple of questions that came through too we got just a few minutes jerry said are you able to get the restaurant owner on the phone pretty easily or do you pitch them on the phone or set up a meeting so the the beauty of this is that I never ever speak to a restaurant unless they've actually filled out an application to work with us. So by the time I get on the phone, I'm like, Hey, what's up? You approached me. What's going on? How can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you know, never cold call. Or what's the way that, or through your scan code at events, obviously, but other ways, what other ways are you getting them to those applications? Facebook ads, uh, YouTube ads, uh, Google retargeting ads. I mean, all, all over the place. J yeah. Jace really manages all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's it's one of those things where like we're fortunate to have finally figured out our marketing funnel to bring leads to us. It's all inbound at this point. Yeah. But you know, I I think for anyone who might be doing like cold outreach, cold outbound, you really just got to find a way to be extremely direct, extremely uh, unique in what it is you offer, um, and don't just say all the stuff everyone else is saying. I mean, like literally, I get LinkedIn messages and emails all the time of saying, "Hey, I help agencies get leads." Yeah. Great. Cool. So does everyone else. Like you gotta say it in another way. Like yeah, you know well, what I mean. Back to your methodology idea, which I think is something that a lot of people don't focus on, but I think it's so. My coach yeah. Adam talks about it a lot, and I love it. Yeah, so awesome, really good. Okay, so then um, also Keith says, I'm wondering your thoughts on pre-selling or on selling pre-made templates as a way to get started. So, so selling a template to a restaurant? Or are he's talking about we talking about selling like a. Uh, a template that you can create on many chat as a way to get started uh to answer his question i think that i listen i don't think any idea is can't be done or if it provides value to the client i think that that person would have need to have a way to execute on the template in order for it to provide value so yes you could sell a template but 
whoever you're selling it to needs to have a level of understanding to where you, they actually know what to do with the template. Like yeah. I've, I've, I've used some different CRM and software tools where somebody's imported something in the account and it is just a giant web where I'm like, holy cow, I, oh, yeah. I know marketing, but I don't even know what to do with this. So I think a template's the same way. You could download a template into somebody's account. That's not going to provide value to them unless they actually like know what to do. So if, if you can maybe, uh, I think as a solution to that, uh, sell them the template, but then maybe also provide them with like a video tutorial on like what to do if they have Which the template, I do, I do or maybe you're helping them. Chat, the mini chat templates, when you get them, there's a link for a video. So that's actually an awesome point. Like you can include the video right there. Yeah, so something to help, video, to, yeah, something to help provide them with like additional value. I think, that yeah. could, I think that could work. Totally. I think, uh, but you're right though, that, uh, with a lot of templates, a lot of people don't know how to use them. So even like, we used to sell a full bot build, we would build out all this stuff in the beginning and it was like a month with, so two calls to help teach them how to do it. And then they'd be like, it's not working. And I'm like, cause you're not putting it out there. Like you're not doing anything with it. So we don't even offer that anymore. We, you know, at, at this point, I'm now only coaching other people to build bots. We're not we're taking on any more clients, but when we were it, um, it's like the, without the actual management piece of it or without teaching them, like you said, how to management, how to manage it, it can actually be something that doesn't, it creates a bad, um, like a, a, they are like, oh, bots don't work because they don't actually, they're not actually using it, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing I think people need to focus on is they're so focused on what can I do with this? What is this? Instead of figuring out what is the client's need? What is the pain yeah. point they're trying to solve? So like for us, we're like, Big pain point, nobody knows that marketing is working. We can solve that with a messenger bot. It wasn't like, let's go to messenger bots and figure out what we can create for a restaurant. We're like, we went to the yeah. restaurant, what's your problem? Here we can fix it with this. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? It was like that, yeah. so. And I think sometimes we try to create these other like smaller technical things that stop us from talking to human beings. So getting on those actual calls and actually connecting with people when you're first looking to get it started can be one of the best things that you can do. Like you said, getting the funnel in place took you how long? Like how long did it take you to get to the place you are now where you have the whole funnel in place and it's it's generating those leads? Our inbound I mean, funnels? Yeah. It's never ending. I've, I've changed it a hundred, a hundred times. Yeah. So it's a pretty well-oiled machine now, but hey, at one point in time, it started off really scrappy and that's how everything starts, right? And over yeah. time, you just make it better and better and better and better. And uh you know, now it's a McKenzie shirt that she first booked her first restaurant client and it was a trade for free food. So it's like, you know, there's, there's so many ways that you can, yeah. can get started and improve results with many chats. So it's super cool. Totally. Yeah. I love and it. I, I know, I know a lot of people are pursuing restaurants now and I think that's awesome because it is a great huge space and there's lots of restaurants, but again, 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 I want to stress like car washes and other industries are really good for this as well. Like, yeah, I've been telling people this for over a year and no one's touching it. So like, I don't know who's going to do it, but whoever does is going to be a millionaire. I know this. So please, someone do it. Someone's got to do it. Right here. <laughs> like, I oh. want to do it, but we, we're already restaurants. So, you know, yeah. I, we're not going to switch now. I love it. So awesome. Such good. So good. So good. So good. So um, Brett is asking, how did you get your first few clients? So I think really the best way to get your first few clients is to build relationships and like talk to human beings. Like, I'm sure there are people that you actually know something like this would work for actually our very first restaurant or i mean okay comes out to your network get a referral from a friend a family member that's how it started uh for everyone who's you know in california if they know about del taco literally yeah. i actually i was one of our first clients del taco <laughs> which is crazy because they're huge right that was really lucky. <laughs> But at the time, we were just doing content creation, taking pictures of tacos and stuff like that, whatever. Yeah. But hey, we got Del Taco now on our name, right? Yeah, and totally then, awesome. And then another one is Molly. Have you ever heard of uh, uh, Tommy's Burgers, original Tommy's? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we got them too, like our third restaurant, which Amazing. was ridiculous. Um, also through family friends. So use your network, get a referral, and then, you know. And this is another reason to niche because if you say you're looking for people that you want to, you're looking for people to build bots for, no one knows who to recommend you to. Exactly. But if you say, oh shoot, can you hear me? Yeah. We hear you. Okay, I just hit my microphone and sometimes 
Oh, my mic never was even plugged in. You both asked me about how my mic sounded. Today, my mic sounded real good because I never plugged it in, which is awesome. <laughs> well, Molly, for the record, you've been sounding great the entire yeah, you sound uh, live stream. So. Thanks. Well, all my vocal warm-ups helped. Okay. <laughs> Super awesome. You guys, this is so great. I love it. I'm going to, maybe we'll meet up at a Tommy's or a Del Taco somewhere between here in LA. And I look forward to seeing you at the Conversations Conference. Those of you that are here with us, I'm going to move the mic out of the way because I'm not using it. Those of you that are here with us today, we hope that you'll be there. I saw some of you are gonna be there. Tim is gonna be there, really awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming on today, sharing this knowledge. I think it's so great to hear how people started so we can see the success that you're bringing not only for your clients, but also in your own business, which is really, really awesome. Remember, if you're looking for a discount code, all you have to do is give us the word misfit below this video, then reply to the message that Manny the Many Chat Bot sends to you. We have just a few more of these videos left because camera the, the conversations conference is coming up so soon. So it's so good. Um, yeah. Where can we find out more about you guys? I know you have a Facebook page, Misfit Media, but you have your own pages too. Like where's the best place to go connect with you? Uh our Instagrams are just our names. Mine's just Brett Linkletter and Jace is just Jace Kavakovich. Awesome. Uh, we post a lot about basically what we're doing on a daily basis. Um, our office is uh, very non-traditional. We post a lot of ridiculous things sometimes, but also some pretty cool tips and tricks about marketing in general. So uh, kind of us there probably on Instagram is the best. And then obviously we have Facebook pages too. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll be, we'll be at the conference. Uh, oh. we'll, be, we'll be buying drinks somewhere Saturday night in Austin. So people should come join us and we'll have a good time. <laughs> I can't wait. Are you going to the internet marketing party as well? On Instagram. So good. Are you guys going to the internet marketing party as well the night before on the 12th? Um, I, yeah, I think I don't so, know, yeah. but I think that sounds it's fun. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's going to be the speaker there, and um, it's pretty dope. So hopefully we'll see you guys there too. So that's on the 12th, the night before the conference, internet marketing party. Mini chat will be there. Then the conference is in Austin, September 13th through 15th. Remember, you can get a discount code if you give us the word misfit below this video. And it's going to be super awesome. So cannot wait to see you guys there. Thanks so much for joining us.